You know, Kyle, you shouldn't use Firebase, because if you do, you're locked in forever. Chances are you've heard of Auth0, which is an incredible authentication company, but did you know they also have an amazing YouTube channel where they focus on tons of React, Vue, Jamstack, and of course, security-related concepts? Their videos are incredibly professionally well done, and they're great at teaching you concepts from building modern applications, and of course, always keeping in mind security. On top of that, if you're interested in Next.js, they have an entire series on Next.js, which is all about building a secure, full-stack, Jamstack-based application using Next.js, Airtable, Auth0, and Tailwind CSS. I'm going to link their channel down in the description below, as well as that Next.js series, and I highly recommend you check it out because Auth0's content is amazing, and this Next.js series is hosted by the one and only James Q. Quick, so you're not going to want to miss out on that. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now I hear this type of complaint all the time, whether it's Firebase or AWS's version or McLambda or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's you shouldn't use some type of vendor specific tool because then you're stuck with vendor lock-in. And essentially all vendor lock-in is is that you wrote all of this code built around a certain system, whether it's Firebase or, you know, Lambda, whatever it is. And now you can't move off of that system because all of your code is specific to that system. And that's a bad thing. You don't want to be locked into a specific vendor. You want the freedom to move around because if Firebase raises their prices by 200%, now you're screwed because you just have to pay the extra difference because you can't just easily transfer over to AWS or, you know, wherever else. And this is a valid point. But a lot of people overstate how valid this point really is. For one, using a tool like Firebase is great because it allows you to really quickly prototype something for a relatively cheap cost and get running with an application that normally would take, you know, tons and tons of time, sometimes even years of experience and years of work that you can get done in, you know, a month. And that's a great thing. But everybody kind of already knows that reason why Firebase and other tools like this are good. The other reason that many people don't talk about though when it comes to vendor lock-in is that if you write good, well-maintained code, it's actually really easy to swap from one vendor to another. Let's say that you write some Firebase authentication code, and you write your code in a way such that you call generic methods such as sign in, log up, and those methods actually do all the Firebase specific information. Well, now let's say you wanna switch from Firebase to something else, like you wanna to switch to Auth0. All you need to do is take Firebase, yank it out of your application in that Auth portion, and just insert Auth0 into those you know, login sign up functions. The rest of your code doesn't actually reference Firebase anywhere. It's just those specific functions. So now you've essentially easily transported out that Firebase code and put in Auth0 without too much hassle because you just, you know, had a few functions that were referencing Firebase specifically. And this is something that you can actually do fairly easily with a lot of things. But then when you start to take advantage of vendor specific features, such as, you know, Firebase's real time database, maybe you can't find that if you switch to Postgres, for example. So you'd either need to build that feature out yourself or do some heavy modifications. But now you're not so much saying, oh, I'm stuck with Firebase. You're saying I'm using a specific feature of Firebase that I can't get anywhere else. So of course you're gonna want that feature. That's why you're using Firebase in the first place. You're not just using it as a generic database. You're using it for the specific real-time database features. So in that case, it doesn't really matter if you're stuck with the vendor because you're using the vendor specific stuff. You want to be stuck with that vendor because you enjoy what they have. And if you need to swap out for Postgres or something, it'll take a lot of manpower to write that out by hand, which is why you're using Firebase, so you don't have to write it out by hand. But people take this even further in the fact that they don't want to use a specific database. They don't want to write Postgres you know, code. They don't want to write MongoDB specific code. They want to use an ORM, for example, which wraps their entire database so that now, instead of writing Postgres specific code, you write this generic ORM code. And then you can plug it into a MySQL database, a Postgres database. You can even plug it into a Mongo database. It doesn't matter. But the problem with that is Postgres, MySQL, Mongo, they're very different, especially like Mongo and Postgres. These are two completely different databases. And now you're using the same code to access both of them. So you're taking advantage of none of the advanced features of these. And you're just getting the worst of all the scenarios combined together because you can't take advantage of all the unique specific vendor code. But what you did do is you prevented vendor lock-in because now you can easily swap your entire application from Postgres to Mongo. But why would you ever do that? When are you ever going to need to swap from one database to another type? I can't think of a single scenario where I was like, man, I really wish I wrote this app in Mongo. Too bad I wrote it in Postgres and now I can't swap. No, 
Normally you're like, I wrote it in Postgres because I wanted to use Postgres and now I'm using Postgres. And if you eventually have a specific reason to change from Postgres to Mongo, for example, then you need to take advantage of the Mongo specific characteristics. That's the only reason you would ever want to switch. It's not because, oh, you know what? Postgres is so last year. I'm switching to Mongo. That's what all the cool kids use. No, you're switching because you're like, I really need the NoSQL implementation of MongoDB and I need to take advantage of that to make my application as performant as possible. And to do that, you'd need vendor lock-in because you need to use Mongo specific features to take advantage of all the cool things that are around MongoDB. Now, I'm not trying to say that vendor lock-in is nothing to worry about because there are instances where you may heavily integrate a software into your code, for example, Firebase, but not actually use any of the cool Firebase specific features. So you're just kind of using a generic version of Firebase and then they raise their prices and now you're kind of stuck with them because you wrote your code in a way that's difficult to you know, change to something else. So if you're able to write your code in a way that's easily able to be swapped from one type to another, that can help you avoid this type of vendor lock-in. But when you need to start using those advanced features specifically for that thing such as Firebase, then there's no point in avoiding vendor lock-in because you're saying I am choosing this for these cool features. So you don't really have to worry about vendor lock-in then. It'd be the same thing if someone says, you know what? I don't know if I want to use React, Vue, Svelte, or Angular, so I'm going to write generic code that can use React, Vue, Svelte, or Angular. If you do that, you're just going to get a worse version of all of those combined together into some unusable mess. But some people try to do this because they're like, well, what if React dies or Facebook, you know, takes React out? I mean, okay, that could happen, and you'd have to rewrite your entire application, but would you rather risk that small chance of something bad happening for the fact that you have a much better development experience using just React instead of this weird amalgamation of everything, and the fact that your app is going to be more performant and better in pretty much every way. I mean, it sounds like a pretty much no-brainer because odds of that happening, Facebook taking down React is pretty much zero. But some people worry about that kind of stuff. And I know this video is probably coming off kind of harsh towards people that worry about vendor lock-in, and I don't want that at all because it is a real thing that can happen. But in general, most people don't need to worry about vendor lock-in because the code that you're writing, you need to take advantage of those specific features. So you want to be locked into a specific vendor. And then when you're not writing towards those specific features, it's relatively easy to write your code in a way that makes it easy to swap from one vendor to another. The moral of the story is next time someone tells you that you're a fool for using Firebase or Lambda or React or Vue, just don't worry about it. If you feel comfortable using it and you feel comfortable saying I'm locked into React or Firebase or Vue, that's perfectly okay. You're taking advantage of those unique features to create amazing experiences on the web. and That's really all that matters. And that is all I have to say about this topic. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this and check out my other videos linked over here. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.